Great Falls Schools dealing with a lot from network issues to COVID cases. See how it's impacting students. Plus, with the census deadline quickly approaching and an extension unlikely, how state officials are doing their best to make sure everyone is counted. And later on a mission to raise awareness about mental health resources. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Also ahead, an update on a shooting in Valier. Thanks for joining us on the MTN 530 News here on KRTV. I'm Tim McGonigal. And I'm Hallie Schwinnard. First tonight, students and families in Great Falls Public Schools are dealing with a lot this week. Four coronavirus cases confirmed. Also, a major network outage. MTN Zach Shermerly shows us how the news is affecting students in school and at home. It's a tale of two normals in Great Falls Public Schools, with some students back to school and others learning from home. But the realities of the pandemic are catching up with GFPS, and there's one thing everyone's relying on much more than usual. So much dependence on technology. GFPS students and staff are dealing with a major network outage, the district said on Tuesday. No word yet on what exactly is causing the outage, but it comes as ransomware attacks are shutting down schools in other parts of the country. We're aware of that, and again, um, the experts that we're working with and the specialists are aware of that as well. And we're trying to determine the extent and uh, the degree to which our systems are failed. Moore says nearly 20% of the district's approximately 10,000 students have opted for remote learning this semester. Moore says they hope to have the outage handled either within the week or into next. But one common theme. It's very frustrating. First time in, I think, 20 years for me where we've been shut down with everything. You know, we're used to having one of our programs down, but we're not used to the whole system being shut down. And that's how we were with this. So It comes the same week the district is dealing with its first confirmed coronavirus cases. Two students at Great Falls High School over the weekend tested positive for the coronavirus. And on Tuesday, two more, one from Paris Gibson, another from East Middle School. Here outside East Middle School, where classes just got done for the day, only a few days after a student tested positive for the coronavirus, a world of its own with unique challenges. Um, it is going to come out in the community. It's going to come out in our schools. It's going to come out in places. And it's just important that they know that we're doing our best to support their needs and their safety. Never been in school during a pandemic, so we're learning more and more. We've learned so much since March, um, and I really feel that we're doing the best we can to keep our students healthy, safe. We consider it a blessing to be back with kids because uh, doing it without them remotely was a tough thing to do. And so any challenge we have, I feel like bring it on. At least we get to be with kids. In Great Falls, Zach Shermley, MTN News. Contact tracing efforts are underway at East Middle School, Paris Gibson Education Center and Great Falls High. Carroll College has reported a 12.5% decline in students compared to last year's class, although it's still 5% higher than their fall 2018 low. The private Catholic college has 270 new first-year students and 51 transfer students and students readmitted to the college. The total number of students attending Carroll for the fall 2020 semester is 1,123. The COVID-19 pandemic is believed to have been a big factor in not just Carroll's fall enrollment, the colleges and universities nationwide. Nationally, student loan volume was down over 40% and many students had issues taking their ACTs and SATs due to the shutdown. Although enrollment is down this fall, Carroll did see their second highest retention rate between freshmen to sophomores in the past 20 years. Carroll's retention rate was 83%, while the average retention rate at other colleges and universities in Montana is at 68%. Well, recent college graduates face a tough time getting their first job. A study shows just 18% of graduates can expect to find a job this year. That's down from about 60% in an average year. For graduates trying to find a job in a tough market, experts recommend searching for the job, uh, searching for a job half the time and doing some kind of training the other half. Well, today was warmer and it was uh, more sunny than yesterday. Meteorologist Grant Garland joins us now with our first look at our forecast. Grant. Yeah, that's exactly right, Tim. Go ahead and take a look across Montana right now. Blue skies everywhere. It looks beautiful and it feels nice too. We're seeing temperatures in the 70s for a lot of us. 70 degrees in Helena and Great Falls, 71 in Cup Bank and Haver, and uh, 65 degrees. Look at you guys. You got, got 
got a lucky 65 there. Feels good outside. Four mile per hour winds, not, not barely even registering in some locations, not having any wind problems, and that's going to be the continuing trend. Now, thanks to a high pressure that we'll talk about later, we are looking at clear skies. A few clouds off towards Canada, but not here in the states where we're at. We are seeing as we head throughout the next couple of hours, temperatures falling down to 57 degrees by 9 p.m. by 6 a.m. 43 degrees. So you're probably going to need to have a light jacket with you as you make your way out the door tomorrow morning for your morning commute in the bus stop forecast. Overall temperatures tonight 41 degrees in Great Falls as well as Helena and Cutbank. Now coming up, we're going to talk about what to expect for the rest of the work week. But for now, back to you. Thank you, Grant. The Glacier County Sheriff's Office has released new details about a high speed chase that ended with a suspect being shot in Valier. Here's a picture from that scene last week on Friday. Officers began a chase of the suspect in Glacier County involving a reported stolen vehicle. The suspect, whose name has not been released, tried to run several vehicles off the road during the chase and led officers into Valier. The suspect got out of the vehicle armed with a knife. That's when a deputy shot the suspect. The nature and extent of the person's injuries have yet to be released. On Tuesday, the Air Force awarded a $13.3 billion contract for the ground-based strategic deterrent to Northrop Grumman. The company will begin replacing aging ICBM missile system with the GSBD starting in 2023, while construction at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Great Falls won't begin until 2026. The project and the development bring, it brings in will have a huge impact on the local economy, according to Chamber of Commerce President Shane Etzweiler. The impact's going to be tremendous. I mean, it's going to bring in jobs in the community, and of course, the economic impact is going to be tremendous as well. You know, we don't know the actual number right now at this point, but when the Air Force says it's going to be an $80 billion project, we're going to get a pretty big piece of that pie. Officials at Malmstrom told MTN they will begin working on an environmental impact statement in October or November. A federal judge has temporarily halted the winding down of efforts of the Trump administration for the 2020 census count. State officials say the ruling hasn't changed their efforts to make sure every Montanan is counted by September 30th. MTN's John Riley has more. As the COVID-19 pandemic shut down the country, the Census Bureau postponed key parts of their population count until August. The Trump administration reversed course last month on their plans to extend the count deadline from the end of September to October 31st, an action that is currently being challenged in court. The state says they're working as if the September 30th deadline is set in stone, given the billions of dollars in state representation that is associated with the count. Should the court require the Census Bureau to extend the deadline, we'll take full advantage of every single day that's available. Um, but given that the goalposts have continued to move on the 2020 census throughout the last year, we're doing all we can to ensure Montanans respond to the census before September 30th. The state is currently third from the bottom in reaching the complete count compared to the rest of the country. The count itself is conducted by the federal government, but the state has been making efforts to raise awareness. Governor Bullock allocated $530,000 of CARES Act funding to the Department of Commerce in order to help with census promotion. State partners are actively reaching out to low count areas and the state is calling on Montanans to help get the word out. One of the things that Montanans can do um, is to make sure they talk to their friends and neighbors about it. You know, have you filled out your census? Post on your social media account. The state stresses you don't need to receive a mailer in order to complete your census. Anyone can go to my2020census.gov or call 1-844-330-2020 anytime before September 30th to be counted. Reporting in Helena, John Riley, MTN News. From support groups to important information after the break, a push to raise awareness about mental health resources in our area. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Welcome back. A first of its kind walk in Great Falls is taking place later this month to raise awareness about available mental health resources. MTN's Coulter Anstat tells us how the organizer's personal experience motivated this walk. Woo! <laughs> yeah! Matt Lapke is happy swinging his son on the playground. He hasn't always been so happy, though. You ready? Yeah. You gotta hang on tight. About four years ago, he, his wife, and their young son were hit by a drunk driver. 
Matt sustained a pretty significant brain injury. <laughs> After that injury, uh, it triggered some, you know, mental health issues, some depression and crisis. And His wife, Brenna, is the chair of the local chapter of the National Alliance for Mental Illness. She and her husband only recently found out about the organization, which is why she's organizing a walk on September 20th. Had I known back then about the advocacy that NAMI can provide and the caregiver support groups and the peer support groups um, that they offer, it would have been a game changer. And so I don't want, um, it's very important to us to get that information out there. The walk is also a fundraiser for NAMI. More? Right. For Matt, who grew up in Great Falls, the possibility of support for NAMI and the local chapter growing as a result of the walk puts a smile on his face. We have veterans and we have young kids, old dads, moms, everybody that had these problems in this town specifically. It would mean a lot to me if we could get together and make this happen. Just be, you know, uh, whatever we can do. I don't exactly even know what that would be yet, but it would, it would be great. The walk will have many steps, each one another step in the journey to healing. In Great Falls, Coulter Anstat, MTN News. For more information about the National Alliance for Mental Health Illness or the local walk, check out our story on our website, krtv.com. After being postponed this spring because of the coronavirus, an effort by a local nonprofit to beautify some local properties is underway. Today was the first day of NeighborWorks Great Falls community cleanup. Through Saturday, volunteers will be doing things like weeding and tree trimming. Today, volunteers were at the home of an elderly woman. The great thing about the cleanup is that we can all be outdoors and we can make the event happen um, in a way that's safe for everyone. And so um, it's, it's great to be able to hold an event this year and to, to make plans with our neighbors and to do something out in the community. NeighborWorks hopes to start having the event in the spring again next year. Well, warmer temperatures are on their way, all thanks to our high pressure out here. We're going to talk about your seven day forecast coming up after this break. Watching MTN News with the new KRTV streaming app on Roku lets you see live newscasts, weather, sports, breaking news events, and a lot more. To get set up, just grab the remote and turn it on. Go to the left-hand side of your screen and hit search, then type in KRTV. Select Add Channel and you're all set. It's that easy. Now, what if you don't have Roku? Well, we've got you covered with apps for Fire TV, Android TV, and Apple TV. You'll find instructions for all of those devices on our website at krtv.com streaming. With each of these streaming apps, you can experience all of the coverage you've come to expect from MTN, including the award-winning Under the Big Sky series, highlights and compelling stories from montanasports.com, and in-depth coverage of the state's largest industry with the Montana Ag Network. All of that, plus the local news and weather you count on every day. So download the KRTV streaming app today for Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV, or Android TV, and head to krtv.com slash streaming for answers to all your questions from Montana's streaming news leader. Thanks. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Grant Garland. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you have had a great Wednesday. It's my birthday, so I'm trying to, you know, keep a positive attitude 28 and feeling like I'm 80. 70 degrees in Helena and Great Falls right now. 71 in Haver as well as Cut Bank. We are seeing cooler temperatures down towards Lewistown at 65 degrees. Now the average for this time of year is a ride around 73 degrees, so we aren't too far off the beaten trail. Record set back in 1981 when it was 92 degrees. That was the year that a 19 inch color TV cost $400. I can't even imagine that. My TV that I bought at Best Buy, that didn't even cost that much. We're looking at uh, beautiful skies today. All thanks to our upper level winds, I've been able to push that smoke down towards the south, uh, staying out towards Spokane as well and out towards uh, the southeastern part of Montana. But for the most of us, we have been able to see a beautiful blue sky today and our air quality has also been really good. Now we have just uh, updated Glasgow, the Malta area right now seeing moderate air quality conditions.
as well as down in Bozeman. But for the bulk of us, we have been able to see uh, good conditions. Over the last few hours, we've been seeing clear skies, no problems outside. Uh, looks beautiful out there. No, but the only problem is there's no really rain in sight. So tomorrow, well, we are looking at drying out uh, even more so than yesterday. We're looking at around 22%. Our temperatures are going to be warming up, so we're going to expect for our uh, fire forecast to start becoming more and more elevated as we head throughout the rest of the work week. Now, as far as our winds are concerned, we're going to be looking at kind of the same situation today as tomorrow. We're going to possibly see a 20 mile per hour wind gust up towards Cut Bank, but for the most of us, at least uh, we're going to be seeing five to 10 miles an hour. And here's the reason why so the high pressure that is taking its slow time. It's not really making it. It's, it doesn't. It's not in a hurry and that's going to allow that's going to influence our entire weather pattern uh, for really from here through at least on Sunday. Now we do have a low pressure that will start to track up towards the northeast. It will be bringing sh rain showers for those in South Dakota and North Dakota, but it's going to be missing us. We're going to have that high pressure just allow for our temperatures to warm up and for us to continue to stay dry. 82 degrees on Friday, warming up to 84 on Sunday and then 88 on Monday before our next system moves in on Tuesday, 75 degrees there and 73 on Wednesday. Uh, we are looking at possibly getting 20%. Well, it's going to be slight, at least for now, but we're only expecting an isolated shower or two on Tuesday. You can always stay weather aware by following me on social media at meteorologist Grant Garland, as well as downloading that free KRTV app. It is free and ever present. 39 degrees tonight in Lewistown, 44 in Hayes, 41 in Great Falls, 42 in Haver. As you head on out towards the Dakotas, well, you guys are going to be looking at the, the 30 degree temperatures. Overall, tomorrow morning, you're probably going to need to have a light jacket with you at least to start off today for the bus up forecast 43 degrees quickly warming up though by 1 p.m. to 71 degrees so you won't have to worry about that jacket staying on for too long overall we are expecting temperatures to warm up into uh, 76 in Great Falls 79 in Haver 77 in Helena as well as in Cutbank and right around 73 out towards Glendive as we go throughout the next three days not only will our temperatures continue to warm but we'll continue to see sunny skies and we're going to be looking at again a beautiful weekend uh, so get out and enjoy that uh, that hike. Clouds do start to build in though on Monday, even it will be mostly sunny for an isolated chance of showers on Tuesday. Hallie. Still to come, local craft beers brewed with local craft hops. Your Ag Report is next. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Well, it's that time of year when fresh hop beers start showing up at your favorite local breweries. In tonight's Montana Ag Report, MTN's Sean Wells takes us to a hops farm in Big Fork, where peak harvest is underway. I'm Sean Wells in Big Fork, where Montana hops are in peak harvest, an exciting time for Flathead Valley beer lovers. It has always been the goal to have craft hops for craft brewers so that they can make beers made with all Montana ingredients. Big Sky Hop Farms, part of Big Sky Orchards in Big Fork, are one of the biggest hop producing farms in the Flathead Valley. The farm consists of 10 acres of hop fields growing six individual strains of hops. The family owned business sells fresh hops to local breweries during harvest and also dry pellet hops that can be sold year round. Some of those hops are bittering hops which would be used in IPAs and pale ales and others are um, aroma hops, which are used in all beers, but just like the sauce, for example, is used in Pilsner beers. So lots of, lots of different varieties for lots of different beers. Along with hops, the Jones family also farmed cherries along Flathead Lake. Zach Jones studied horticulture at Montana State University and says harvesting both hops and cherries is a full-time job for both he and his sister Maddie. Tossing around the idea of growing hops and that, that might be a pretty good industry to get in up here, especially with cherries and you never really know how harvest is going to go there so it kind of split us up and allowed us to do two different crops. This is the third year the Jones family are harvesting hops in the first season using their own processing facility. The facility includes the Wolf Hop Harvester, which they acquired with an agriculture grant through the state of Montana. The Wolf Harvester separates hop cones from vines onto a conveyor belt. Hops are then dried, which takes eight to 10 hours to reach the correct dry matter level. Each acre here at Big Sky Orchards can produce up to a ton of dry hops, which frankly is making me thirsty. In Big Fork, Sean Wells, MTN News. Big Sky Hops Farm recently delivered 75 pounds of hops to Glacier Brewing in Polson for a batch of fresh hops beer. 
Don't go away. We'll be right back. Four. Well, temperatures tonight, 41 degrees in Great Falls, 43 in Helena, and 44 out towards Hayes and towards Glasgow. We are looking at temperatures starting us off tomorrow right around 43 degrees, so you might need to have a, a little extra layer just to get you through the early morning hours, especially for the bus stop forecast for 75 degree temperatures by 4 p.m. We are expecting 76 degree temperatures in Glasgow, Jordan, and Great Falls, 77 in Helena and Cutbank, and 79 in Haver. As far as the next three days go, we are going to continue to warm up and stay above the average with sunny skies. The next best chance of showers, and it will be just slight, will be on Tuesday. Cool mornings and warm afternoons. Yes, sir. We'll take and it. happy birthday, Grant. Oh, Tim said he was going to sing to you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm not going <laughs> to. Uh, no. <laughs> See it.